Would you buy 14 content websites in the space of around two years? Hi, I'm Jared Krause. I'm the host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And today I'm speaking with Garth Adams, who is the owner of the popular Australian travel companies, I know the pilot.com.au and I want that flight.com.au. Now these sites have over 300,000 email subscribers, over 500,000 Facebook followers and get many hundreds of thousands of visitors each month. And as well as being in travel, Garth also owns some other sites such as sudoku.com, but we also talk about in this episode about how he bought 14 content websites, why he bought these websites, where he went and bought them from and how much he, he spent on each of them and, and different tiers and what he learned from the different price ranges of the businesses he, businesses he bought. We also talk about that those types of sites, why some were more valuable than the others. We also talk about, and this is very critical, the lessons that he learned around the process of buying websites and things that you as a first timer should be really thinking about and should be conscious of so you don't set yourself up for failure like so many people who come to this space of making money online and trying to buy websites actually do. We also talk about his experience buying starter websites that sounded very, very good and what happened with those, how they evolved. Then we move into the growth phase of you know, some of the things that he did with his bigger sites in the travel space to get, you know, many hundreds of thousands of viewers per month versus what he was doing with these other content websites that he bought, which are a bit smaller. We talked about some of the backlink building strategies that he used because he didn't really need to build backlinks in the travel space, but what he did with backlink building, where he went and bought those backlinks from, some of, a bit about his process of finding the right type of backlinks and having a bit of a criteria on what those backlinks should have. Then we moved into content creation and talked about you know, building content, what cheap content looks like versus good content and everything in between. And we just end up having a good conversation really about being an entrepreneur and running a portfolio of content websites. There's so much value in this podcast episode if you're looking to buy a website. And if that's you, please understand that, you know, we talked about doing due diligence and we talked about buying sites. Know that if you are going to do this, make sure you get my due diligence framework that I mentioned in the podcast episode that you can get for free. Go to buyingonlinebusinesses.com forward slash free resources and you can get my due diligence framework for free and many other free resources that we have on that page too. Let's dive into this valuable episode with Garth. Garth, thanks for coming on. Welcome to the Bob podcast. Hey, Jad. Well, thanks very much for inviting me. It's uh, good to be on it. Yeah, man. I didn't realize until literally we just started our call now. I didn't realize that you actually had new the show and you'd listened to a bunch of episodes. Did you say a year ago or something? Yeah. So around about a year, year and a half ago is when I was doing the bulk of my buying of uh, new websites. Well, new for me. Um, mm. And I discovered your podcast online. Um like just on Apple Podcasts, just searching for how to buy websites, this information. And I just, I just wanted to get a more of an overview. I come at uh, like buying websites, uh, very new to that. I've been doing SEO and owning my own sites and growing them from scratch. But buying other people's sites is very different. And so it was good to, you know, discover your podcast and you know, get quite a useful lot of uh, information out of uh, yourself and your guests. Awesome. Thanks. I'm so glad. Um, you got a lot from it. I also have a bit of a story for you as well, which is very interesting. <laughs> I went to I went to email you the other day uh, because we hadn't received uh, an image just for the thumbnail for the podcast. So I yep. uh, went to email you and I typed your email address in one of my other emails, an older email, a Gmail email, and realize that we had already had a thread of conversations together back in 2014. Wow. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And you actually, out? you actually reached out to me for one of your sites because I had a site in the travel space. Uh -huh. and I was travel blogging. I won't mention the domain, but I had a site in the travel space. You reached out and wanted a, a sponsored post and, and backlink. And yep. uh, we went, we've already done business together back in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was crazy. Neither of us remember. But <laughs> yeah. It was a I while ago now. It is a while ago. In internet years, that's like seven decades. 
Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> nice to meet you in person. Yeah, it's great. It's great to catch up. So congratulations on being where you're at. I wanted to dig in and talk to you about, you know, some of your travel sites and some of your stuff to done with that. But first, let's let's chat about some of the sites you bought. Have you bought sites? Do you go through and, and, and buy some? And what does, yeah. you know? How did the journey go for you so far? Well, I might, I'll give you a little bit of a background as to why I even bothered to start buying sites. So I own, um, I want that flight and I know the pilot, mm. um, which pre pandemic were quite successful travel sites. They were both yeah. getting about a million visits a month. Um, I had several employees, everything was great. And I was thinking, ha ha, nothing can go wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, then of course the pandemic hit and everything changed. Uh, the mm. sites just went like completely dark. No one was traveling. No, certainly no one was flying. Um, I had to let mm. all the employees go. Everything yeah, collapsed. At that stage, you really had no idea when travel was going to come back. Um, yeah. So I just started looking around for other things. I already owned um, sites that weren't in the travel space from many, many years ago. And I got back into those, did those up. Um, the main one there is sudoku.com.au. But then I was re reading about, you know, starting sites from scratch and I tried a bit of that. And then my experiences and just the time it's going to take thanks to the Google sandbox and hmm. just a lot of things, just starting things from scratch. And then I decided it'd be much better to actually take existing businesses or existing content sites mostly. And then using um, what I knew about SEO and also what I know about uh, advertising networks to quickly increase the income, hopefully, and then sell them from there. And so that was what sort of got me into it. Um, if travel, if we never had the pandemic, I guess I probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that's, it's just how it is. Um, and here we are like, gosh, two and a half years later from, and still very much feeling the effects of the pandemic and in travel, yeah. air travel out of Australia is still a complete mess. So, you know, yeah. hopefully things will recover. will continue to recover there. I'm, I, I hope, and I'm sure they will as well. And yeah, sorry to hear about that. It's, it's a massive spanner in the works, but also <laughs> I just want to take my hat off to you, you know, Garth, uh, going, all right, this has happened. What, what do I do now? And you've gone out and actively done something different and, and started working on other income streams, which is so cool. So I definitely applaud you for that. Some people just put their head in the sand and uh, go, well, <laughs> hang my hat up. Well, and done. I would have loved to have done that, but unfortunately the mortgage was not going <laughs> to put its head in the sand. So but anyway, yeah. it, it is what it is. Uh, and look, lots of people had it much worse. So you just take what you're given, really. So anyway, uh, so the first things I actually looked at um, findings, I, I wanted to have a scalable um, process as possible. My initial idea was to um, have a few sites and have them, you know, um, so increase the traffic and flip them. And mm. Actually, I think I uh, got some sites built for me um, from a forum. Um, I can't remember which one it was, but I, built, I, I bought a few basic starter sites and all the reviews were fantastic and everything was golden. Um, and the guy produced them, well, the, the company produced them and they did everything that they said, but certainly the results were, were not there. And I think at yeah. the time I didn't have enough knowledge about how to take these starter sites, which really uh, I needed to do more due diligence about what I was getting because like a few months afterwards when things sort of weren't going so good, I had a much closer look at the content and I realized, oh, everything looks fine, but the HTML under the hood, there's no H2s, there's no H3s. He's just yeah. used bold and increased yeah. the font size and you know, all these Basically. things are terrible for SEO. Yeah. So that's sort of, I think I bought two or three sites and they sort of never really went anywhere. I've still got them. They earn, I don't know, a few dollars a week or a month. Yeah. After that experience, and it's sort of taking a fair bit of time, that's afterwards I swapped to buying sites. Yeah, I've noticed. But I mean, I just want to jump in there as well before we move into the buying of sites. Yeah, sure. Uh, a, a lot of people want to like find out, oh, wow, I can buy a business instead of start one. And then they look at doing, doing DD due diligence on a lot of deals and they realize like, oh, a lot of these aren't, you know, the greatest deals and I can't find the right one. And they, we're always looking for the path of least resistance. And so yeah. people will go 
go what I would say is a step back and go, I'm going to buy a starter site that somebody's built because, you know, the hard part is the startup phase and they go away and do that. They get burnt and they go, Jared has spent a lot of time and a lot of money. Now I've got, now I'm going to come back to buying something that's actually established. So it's alarming how many people actually go through that, through that journey because it is, does look quite attractive. Hey, you're going to go mm. buy a starter site. That's, it was a lot you know, cheaper. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot cheaper and makes more sense in theory. Right. Well, I think at the start, and I get a lot of these people, you just don't know what you don't know. So, Correct. you know, you're being told this stuff, you think you've investigated everything and you've got realistic time frames, but it, it just doesn't happen. Well, for me, it didn't happen. And I'm guessing, you know, for a lot of these people that you're talking about, it didn't happen. You know, at the end of you know Actually. six months, the rankings weren't starting to appear. I had bought, mm -hmm. you know, uh, various link packages and everything like that that these people recommended without putting too much thought into it myself because I, I did want to scale it. And I was also, you know, dealing with some other stuff with the, the travel side. Um, yeah. Perhaps I shouldn't have accepted everything on such a uh, face value. <laughs> but um, it, yeah, we've all true. we've all been there though. Like we've all made mistakes and um, learned from it, and we've spent a lot of money on things that haven't netted us an ROI. So it's it's definitely a part of the journey. I think we all we all go through it. But if uh, just by us having the conversation about it, hopefully we can prevent people from having to too many people from having to do the a similar thing. So then you moved. So then you went. All right, this didn't really work out. So then you moved to like let's buy some some established sites. What did that look like? Did you is that when you sort of went? Oh, Jared's got this podcast here started looking at brokers and then yeah what, what well i was listening then? to you and to, uh the niche pursuits and the authority hackers and a few of those sort of um sites so you, you guys i imagine you're you sort of know each other yes <laughs> yes we do yeah, yeah um and yeah it was very interesting listening to that uh listening about content creation listening about seo listening about link building and all that sort of stuff and also buying businesses and how to um, increase, you know, traffic and profitability and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I decided to buy a site and, uh, then it's sort of like, where do you, where do you go? Do you go through, you know, Flipper, which seems pretty crazy, or do you go through, um, do you spend a lot more money and go through somewhere like empire flippers at that stage, having just, uh, dudded myself with a whole bunch of starter sites, I didn't feel comfortable going over to empire flippers and, you know, whacking down 50 or a hundred grand. I actually went uh, probably even riskier than Flipper went on a Facebook group and bought a site there. Um, it, it didn't happen straight away. It actually did do a fair bit of due diligence, but the very first site I bought was only 900 US and it was really just to see how the process was going to go. Um, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'd done a fair bit of e examining lots of different businesses, but I chose one that was very cheap. It was only making like 30 US a month or, or something yep. like that. Anyway, it was yep. like, uh, it was figures like that. But I figured even if I was totally scammed and I thought this is, you know, a 50% chance or something off a Facebook group, I, I wouldn't lose that much and I would learn something from it. But look, that site actually went fantastically. The seller was fantastic. He was very uh, accommodating and understanding that I'd never done a purchase before because there's a, a reasonable amount to it you're going through escrow, there is. Um, doing the domain transfers, doing the transfer of um, uh, tracking, like Google yeah. Analytics and yeah, AdSense and all that sort of stuff. Um, and he sort of walked me through it. Not unfortunately so much that I didn't make a mistake later on with a different site, but anyway. Um, <laughs> and that site, incredibly, after a month and through no uh, work of my own, uh, basically just exploded in traffic. So it must have been all the good work that he did. Um, and it just went Brad. very well. And, uh, so I had a very good experience with that, um, awesome. and fairly early on, which was quite unexpected. And that sort of gave me confidence, you know, for, for more purchases. Cool. Congrats. Yeah, it's really good. I've had that experience as well. This first business I bought, I had to work really, really hard to get the results. The second business I bought, I did basically nothing and we got a hundred percent return on investment back in yeah, seven that's months. Great. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And I was like, Hey, look, I just, I bought the right thing. And at that time, yeah. probably similar to you buying this site is like, I didn't know much about buying sites. Let's be honest. It was my second yeah. business. Yeah. <laughs> so that was pure, pure luck. So what have you done with that site that's done well? And then what sort of 
have you what else have you done in the space of well, buying like, then, where you go um i did buy a considerable number so i think all up i bought about 14. um oh, from oh. that site i you know refined a list of criteria i've heard a number of people talk about it you know the the, the best way to get value is right choosing the right site it's, it's right in the purchase process if you can buy a site yes. that's either under monetized or it's got sort of easy seo wins you can definitely in the first couple of months increase the traffic or increase the profitability um and it all comes down to just choosing the right site yeah so profit is not found it um I just wrote down a list of here are the things that I've got to look for and each of the site here's and also here are the sorts of sites that I'm comfortable with. So mm -hmm. definitely content sites. So I could immediately on Flipper just exclude FBA or any apps or, or all this sort of stuff. They might be great businesses and they're wonderful, mm -hmm. but it's not for me. I haven't got the expertise there. Then it's like, okay, I wrote down a sort of like 10 steps of uh, things that I've got to check once I get at once. I'm sort of interested in a site, then you've got to ask them, can I get access to Google Analytics? And then you want to have a process that you can just run through as quickly as possible so that you can check out a site within 10 minutes. And you can, at this stage, you're more sort of excluding and looking for reasons to knock the site back. You've already sort of said in your mind, okay, this, is, this looks pretty good, but now you just want to say, okay, where's all the traffic from? And then if initially it looks like, you know, you're getting this huge amount of traffic, but you find it's all from China, and you're like, okay, I'm not actually, yeah. and it's say you're getting a ton of traffic, but the site's making very little money. And you're thinking, okay, if I swap out AdSense and I put in say Ezoic or Publift or whatever, then I'll double my money. But then if you find all the traffic's from China or India, well, that's not going to work. And yes. so you need to find that out quickly. So you're not wasting time later on. I'm curious, did you, since listening to the podcast a while ago and buying sites, did you at all get uh, the My Due Diligence framework that we give away? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you should get I, it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I haven't really bought many things. I've got a few okay. subscriptions to tools. No, no, this is a free, this is a free, like you can get it for free. It's just oh, a I free, should. like, it's, it's, you know, that's what I said. You should, you yeah, should get yeah. it. Like it's um, it's free. Really, I didn't pay enough attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, look, it, it sounds great. I, I had my own, my own sort of framework, it was not really a framework, more like a little pamphlet. Um, yeah, like a checklist, sort of, right? Yeah, just a 10, yeah. 10 questions once I've got sort of Google Analytics, um, but which made me comfortable uh, in purchasing the site or finding out more. So you've bought 14. Uh, are, are we all, all roughly around the thousand dollar range or no, just no. Like increase it a oh, little bit or once you, uh, once you bought a few, you get your confidence up yes. <laughs> if you haven't lost all the money. So yeah, it, they definitely increased in price. Um, there was, uh, there are ones for a thousand. I'll just have a quick look here. Then. Another I bought one which was sort of based on a database of elevations for about uh, 12,000 US, uh, one on ceiling fans for 14,000 US, and mm -hmm. then it went up and up. And then finally, the, um, the most expensive one was around about 100,000 Australian on um, mobile phones. I was very confident I was getting a good deal with that one. Uh, the site unfortunately hasn't done quite as well as I would have hoped, but in, in the end it'll, it'll make its money, but it wasn't the, uh, the home run that I was hoping for. But yeah, the last site that I bought was actually, no, so like the 10th or so was a site on laptops and that has just exploded in traffic and reacts very well to new content. So these days I'm actually spending most of my time just growing that site. Cool. Um, but, and that was, I think 20, 20,000 or so US. Okay. Um, cool. So yeah, so all over, all over the place. Um, yeah. And become used to buying. And so with that laptop site, what is that? Is that affiliates and ad revenue or is it one or the other mostly? So when, when I bought it, it was all uh, affiliate. Um, or Amazon affiliate and I was earning around, I think it was like 500 to 600 US a, a month. It, it had a decent amount of traffic. I think it was getting around 25 to 30,000 visits a month. Um, and I thought here's a great opportunity to put ads on it and see how that goes. And mm -hmm. again, I felt like I was getting a pretty good deal 
the site was reasonably priced just on based on the Amazon income, adding yeah. the AdSense. Well, I didn't add AdSense. I think I added uh, Ezoic um, at yep. the time. And that basically doubled the income immediately. So I thought it right. was getting a, a pretty good deal. Yeah, and just uh, went from there. Cool. Congratulations on all of those purchases. I'm going to come back to growing these sites soon and, yep, sure. and some of the similar things that you've used or have done with I want that flight and I know that pilot.com you but first and foremost like what are some of the things that you learned through doing due diligence uh, and looking for sites and it doesn't need to be specifically about due diligence it could be about the buying process it could be about the finding process but what are some of the things that you learned that would be helpful for beginner investors as well um well you need to act pretty quickly um there's been plenty of times when i have thought okay this is a great deal um and you know if something's fifty thousand dollars you don't want to you know, just throw it away or jump it quickly. But if it Act is a good quickly. deal, yeah. yeah it, it, if, but if it is a good deal and it looks like that to me, it probably looks like that to someone else. And mm -hmm. so you really do need to pull your finger out and, and just message that person immediately, try to get access to Google Analytics and, and get the deal underway as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to lose it. And after, I think I went through a, a period of about a month and a half and hadn't bought a site. And it was mm. like, oh, you know, I'm still working on the sites that I've got at the time. But you, you want to buy new sites because you eventually want to get to the stage where you're, you're buying and selling sites at roughly the same time. And if you're not buying any new sites, you're not going to get to that, to that stage. But at the same time, you've got to have patience when there isn't something out there. Like, don't change your criteria just because yeah. you can't find a good deal doesn't mean you should accept a worse deal because you know, you're just going to do poorly out of it. I'm so glad that you said that because we have a lot of people in our community are learning how to do due diligence and find a site. And in that process, they might see a case study of somebody that's bought a site within three months or, and, and achieve X amount of result. They go, cool. I'm going to set my expectation. Yeah. I'm going to buy a site <laughs> at this size, make this much money. I'll be making this much money within three months. And that expectation is a absolute killer because if they don't meet that expectation. They might go away and go, all right, I'm going to buy something just to be outside of my criteria and rush into something or. They do the opposite, opposite thing and they just go shiny object syndrome, go find that thing that's super shiny, chase it, which is buy a starter site that 90% of them don't work out. They get burnt and it's because they don't realize that the person that got a site within the three month period might not have a job and they have a lot of time. Whereas the person that puts the expectation at three months, they've got a family, they've got a job yeah. and they've got to do this thing on the side. And they get to the three month period, they're stressed out and they're like, how, how can I not, how have I not done this? I'm a failure. They try and make it work. You know, that person who bought one within the three month period has probably done six to 12 months of work in a three month period because they don't have a job and they've gotten so much better at due diligence and they've done due diligence on say 50 sites or whatever, and they're skilled and trained yeah. up to take action. Whereas the person with a family and has a job, they're not. They, they don't have the ability to do that. So I'm so glad you mentioned that because this is one of the biggest chinks in the armor that people have and failures that people make when they're trying to buy sites and try to get into this is like, time, yeah, time is of the essence, of course, right? That's why we, we have a turnaround time of, you know, 24 to 48 hours of reviewing businesses for our clients so they can, they can get information, get better questions yeah. and buy one as soon as it's, as soon as they're ready and why we also train them up so they don't actually have to rely on us to review them so they can do it themselves and execute straight away so time is of the essence but also don't rush too fast because sometimes we do need to slow down and speed up right i'm so glad yeah. you mentioned that it's very hard to be patient if you haven't had if you've got these goals and nothing's happening yeah. yes and also, you know, if you don't purchase anything for one and a half months, it really feels like, you know, that's been a bit of a waste. But, yeah. you know, the even worse thing is if you buy two dud sites, they get hit by Google penalties that, you know, could have been avoided because they were using risky link building, all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's two things. That's a, yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Did you buy these sites with the intention of taking the skills that you had learned from your previous content sites to input into into these to scale them? 
like use your leverage? Let- well, that was the initial goal. <laughs> um, <laughs> the more that I did it, the the more like some of the things that I was doing with I know the pilot and and I want that flight were applicable. Definitely basic SEO of getting the titles right, getting internal links right, you know, page navigation, all that sort of stuff was right. But I also wanted to keep them at arm's length as well, much more inclined to be risky and, you know, buy link packages and buy, you know, SEO packages uh, with um, these sites that I purchased rather than I want that flight and I know the pilot. Um, yeah. I want that flight and I know the pilot. There's no way I would, you know, risk, you know, getting a ban or anything like that with them. So, but with these other sites, I'm much more inclined to give that a try. Also, mm-hmm. you know, it, once you've got a fair few sites and if you've got some that are on the cheaper end, you're more inclined, well, I was more inclined to just try things out and you just go, okay, why don't we try this seller or this set of thing? And that was interesting too. Um, I started out at various forums buying link packages. You kind of get what you're given there. They would say, here's five links from DR, such and such sites and everything. And you just go, okay. But then I found by actually going on Fiverr that you can get not only cheaper prices, but you actually get to choose exactly which sites the, you know, a guest post will go on or a link edit and stuff like that. And then you can right. actually uh, run those sites through Ahrefs, Ahrefs, gosh, I'll never know yeah. how to pronounce that one. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can actually say, oh, okay, uh, yes, the DR is good, but this site's getting no traffic, mm-hmm. you know? So clearly, you know, it's, it's not really going to be worth much. Well, suppose as much as we know about SEO, this probably isn't going to be worth much. Whereas you can just choose, oh, this one's got high DR, high traffic, and having a look at the actual site, it looks like a real site. It's not just put up there to sell links and stuff like that. And you get, and that was a much better progression than, you know, right at the start when I was just buying link packages and just yeah. getting whatever. And how much are you paying for these links on on Fiverr, roughly? Oh, all over the place. Um, all over the place. So yeah. between 50 to 250 US. Again, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm Australian, but I all these things, you yeah, know, come up in US, US dollars. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, between what, 80 and 400 Australian? Um, the yep. 400 Australian ones, you know, they're for high DR, you know, like 70, 80, um, tons, you know, hundreds of thousands of traffic, and you get a guest post which will be linked in the proper categories and everything like that. And buying guest posts is another whole learning curve as well. Because, you know, these people will promise, you know, definitely get a guest post, then you get a guest post, then you've actually got to check if there's a like a robots no follow or no index yeah. on the page. Mm-hmm. Or if the page has just been posted to a section on the site which never is linked to. So it'll, the pay, your guest post will never be indexed and stuff like that. So you need to check all that. Um, and ideally you ask, once you've done it a couple of times and found out these things, then you make sure you ask the sellers before you begin, okay, is this going to happen? Or, you know, just insist that that's going to happen. If you do um, link purchases through Fiverr, um, there's a pretty good process for you okaying it. Um, so you can actually, you know, check the work Oh, uh, this is no good. Can you change this? And if they never get around to changing it, then you're able to just reverse the the sale, which is good. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, so I guess you'd have a checklist of like the parameters of each link should meet or each post should meet for it to be viable to continue the payment and 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 end yeah, the sale. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because it sounds like it's just one checklist after another, doesn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> My my phone, not just for business, but like just personal stuff, is just full of checklists. You know, yeah, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> we live in the life. <laughs> yeah, content creation. Did you have a similar strategy? So the the link strategy, obviously, with your premium sites um, in the travel space, you're not going to risk buying link packages and and having a, a, a not so good link profile. So you're going yeah. premium. How different was your content content publishing and content creation strategy? Uh, and I'd say it'd be very different, right? Because I've, very, looked, at very those, I've looked at those travel sites and it's very, it's not the norm of content sites when you think of a blog for those travel sites compared to ones that you're buying. So what worked well in the travel, for the travel sites for you in terms of content creation and, and what are your findings working well with these 
um, sites you bought. Well, with the, um, I, I want that flight and I know the pilot because they attract so many links themselves. I didn't have to go around and buy too many links. Yeah. Not these days. When I was first starting out, definitely. Just back in 2014, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that was, it was, they started a long way before then. Um, What's, but, you know, I probably 2014, stopped... 2014 is what, six well, years ago? Six years ago. Is it six years ago? I think it's more like eight. Eight, sorry. Yeah, yeah my math 20. is very off there. Yeah, eight <laughs> years ago. Wow. So how long have you had how long have you had the travel sites? And did you start uh, from gosh, since or? early two thousands? Uh, yeah. I want that flight early two thousands. Um or cool. maybe mid, mid mid no, I want that flight was before Sudoku. So yeah, very early two thousands, like two thousand and one or so. And you I started that pilot. for those from scratch? Yeah, built that from yeah. scratch. Cool. Um I know the pilot's much, much more recent. That was probably around two thousand and sixteen. The way those sites get traffic is actually mostly through email subscribers. Um, and I send out deals and they respond and, and all that sort of stuff. And then luckily, you know, people have been responding to, uh, like deals that they get by linking to me and, and linking to, I know the pilot and, and stuff like that. But look, no one is going to link to these sites that I bought <laughs> these content sites. Um, look, some of them are okay. And definitely like this one that was based on elevation because that, that was like an old site. Um, so it was based on an elevation database and it basically told you the elevation of any point on the world given um, your latitude and longitude. Mm. And it attracted, um, it gets, I don't know, three or 4,000 visits a day just through SEO from all around the world. Who knew? And that one, has a whole lot of historical links, but other sites that I bought were to do with sort of, uh, they have a login to your accounts, um, like various accounts, um, like your Netflix account and stuff like that. Yeah. And people are not going to link to these sites. Um, right. And the English on some of the sites is not spectacular <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Um, so you've got to be out there purchasing links. I bought these sites knowing this and just wanted to try and wanted to see what worked and, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. yeah, very, very different. I'm so glad you said you bought these sites knowing this, that the English isn't the best. And uh, like when people come to me to buy a site for 20 K, it's very different to buying a site for what you're going to get for a hundred K or a bit more with a 20 K, you need to be very lenient with the quality of the content and yeah. the backlink profile and, and, and all those sorts of things. It obviously has room for growth, but it has a lot, lot less put into it. Usually a, a yeah. bit more risk than say a, a bigger site, of course. And that's a very general statement, but yeah, it's something for people to really understand is like, sometimes when I talk about like the ideal site, people are like, cool, I want to buy the ideal site and they've got 20 K and you're like, well, with 20 K, you might not be buying what I have been explaining <laughs> about <Yes. laughs> yeah. in the showroom. There's the yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Getting the Toyota. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. What sort of content strategy have you done for these sites? Uh, these these sites. So before? with the sites, with say this, this first one that I bought for nine hundred bucks, its English was not good, um, no. and uh, I've got to say, I in no way improved it. <laughs> so the, the content that I was getting was dirt cheap. But I actually hired uh, writers, again, through a forum, um, and it was just ridiculously cheap. I think I was paying $2 an article or, or some, oh. something like that. But it wow. was honestly barely readable. And so I would go through and just pick up the most glaring um, grammar mistakes and then mm -hmm. post that. Again, I knew this was not a sort of a quality thing, but I just wanted to see, you know, what was working for that particular site. Um, yep. And again, there's no way I'd do this on, I want that flight or I know the pilot or, or any no, site that I really no wanted way. to take to the next level. But I sort of thought this site is already on a very junky sort of niche. Um, the content is already not great. Um, mm -hmm. And at this stage, I was very much experimenting with what's going on. I also thought that this site it was, it was in such danger of getting banned at any time. I felt that oh, it's, yeah. it's not worth uh, spending a whole lot of money thinking that I'm going to sell it because I thought apart from me buying it for 900 US, which wasn't a lot, I thought even if I get the earnings up to whatever, no one's going to buy this for 10 grand because it's 
it's just looking like any it could be banned at any time by Google. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't feel that it was worthwhile investing too much money in it. Whereas the content for other sites and the content from my main site now, I've actually found writers through Upwork that have got, you know, good to excellent English and that are able yeah. to research articles and that. And they're still um, quite cheap, but the quality is, you know, worlds away from um, this cheaper site. Also using tools like Grammarly, um, that mm -hmm. definitely helps. So if you can, so I've actually purchased a subscription for my writer uh, or for my writers so that they can take, you know, whatever they've written, make sure that um, it sounds as well as it can and uh, is in a quicker time as possible. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. We all know that quality over quantity is, is what Google's wanting. Um, but sometimes there's the game of like putting out quantity at the start just to get rankings and just to get you know, some runs on the board. Well, I'm, I'm sure you've heard of people with AI created sites, you know, getting hundreds of thousands of visits, you know, in a quick time, just because they can pump out reasonably good quality articles very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Which is, I think, worrying for the whole content business. But yeah, yeah. I, I think over the next three to six months, we'll probably see some action there. I, I'm, I'm hoping so, uh, because Google doesn't need more content. They need mm -hmm. better content and Google, I'm sure are going to put parameters around, uh, around that. So where, where do you see yourself going with, you know, buying sites and growing sites? Do you feel like you're going to long-term hold on to a couple and sell the majority and just continue working on those, those ones that you're getting traction with, or are you looking at purchasing more as well? It just sort of depends on travel. I'd much rather get back into travel, get back, yeah. get the gang back together as it was yeah, with yeah. The, uh, the employees. At the moment, it's not really uh, a feasible, a, a, a viable thing just yet. I mean, yeah. the travel is definitely improving, but there's no reason to invest a whole lot in it um, given the state of leisure travel. Around about October last year, I just noticed that one of the sites that I bought in I think it was July or so, was just really reacting well to any new content. And so I would split my time, at that stage, I would split my time between about five or six sites and I would, you know, get two articles to them, probably about three or four articles a month to each site. And that was sort of working reasonably hard. But one of the sites would just increase some in rankings and, and, you know, the those new content would immediately rank, whereas all the other sites were not doing badly, but doing kind of expected, you know, just it was mm -hmm. just middling along, it was sort of okay. And then so around about October, November, I just decided, right, I'm just really going to concentrate on this on this site. And then Google also had its product review update. Um, and I owned a few sites that were um, in, well, well, in the firing line, basically. <laughs> and mm. uh, I have no problem with that update because I think, a lot of sites that were existing on Amazon reviews probably deserve that. If you, I don't know if you've ever tried to buy anything online and you read a review, probably just like me, you're going to this person, you know, so really have a look at this thing or do anything. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. One hundred percent. No, I was being generous there with asking the question. Yeah. yeah so I, I would really only trust review uh, video reviews. If, if yeah. you can actually see the person doing it. And that's what Google's going for. And I think that's fair enough. So anyway, so yeah. that culled a few of the sites that I had, which was you know, not ideal for me, but I think it's good for the internet. Yeah. And at that stage, I also decided to just concentrate on um, sites that would be earning money through ad revenue. Yeah. And so this main site has just been occupying my time um, since then. And I think I showed you a, a traffic chart Yes. I've managed to get it up now to a bit over 17,000 visits a day. Yeah. Um, and it's a very, it's a very day. healthy chart. Yeah. 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 And, and again, uh, I don't think, uh, I've been exceptionally, uh, clever with it. Um, but I have been recognized that this site is doing reacts well to content and I've decided to focus on that to the exclusion of, you know, other stuff. So I spend all my time on that site. Now the others sort of just tread water and I'm just pumping as much quality content into it as I can. Um, mm -hmm. I don't purchase any links. I guess that's the time to sort of say that that site has actually built on an expired domain. So okay. 
wasn't um, it was built an on an expired domain, domain, and then you bought it as a as some somebody built that site on an expired domain. Yeah, so somebody had already bought it um, and built the site, and I think they'd had it for a year or two already. So I had a look at other expired domain sites before that. And I think I've actually purchased other sites and I definitely have no problem with uh, expired domains or, you know, age sites or whatever you want to call them. But I realized that there's a definite risk in the, you know, the first month or the first year or, or maybe whenever um, that Google could just wake up and just go, Hey, wait a second, you're out. Um, but mm. I figured this site had already been around for a while since, um, since it had expired. And so the risk of that was very low. So I haven't actually had to buy any links at all for that site, Excellent. which is really good. And it's now attracting um, organic links through, you know, people linking to articles that are on the site. I wouldn't say a whole heap, but at least it's getting some. Cool. And what niche is that in? That's again, um, it's, it started with laptops and it, it really focused on reviewing laptops and then a few of the problems you might have, like, you know, how to reset this particular sort of laptop or how to do this sort of thing. And then it's just expanded to basically anything tech. Each of the articles, I'll research that using Ahrefs again and, you know, it's determining whether this is a good niche to go into, how many articles that I can get out of it, what's the search volume, all that sort of stuff. Cool. Congratulations. That's excellent. I think that's a great, great episode just now. I think we should maybe get you back on if you're open to it um, in, a, in a couple of months or a year or so and, and see where you're going with it all. Cause, um, well, hopefully it's yeah, still going well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on. Where can we send people to check out more about you and what you're doing? Uh, look, I don't keep much of a uh, social media profile these days. Uh, maybe just if they want to get in contact through LinkedIn, uh, I think I've given you the link. Um, yeah, you've given us a link. They, uh, we'd like to have a holiday anytime soon. I know the pilot or I want that flight. Yeah, guys, check out those two sites. They are awesome sites. So much value in them. I checked them out the other day. So have a look. There'll be links to those in the show notes too. Garth, so much. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, well, thanks very much for having you. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Everybody that is listening, thank you for listening as well. Uh, please, if you are open to it, do us a massive favor and your buddy is a massive favor by sharing this podcast episode with somebody that you know that is looking at trying to just make money online, possibly buying a site and or growing a site. Share this podcast episode with them. It helps us help more people and it helps you help more people too. So thanks so much, guys. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video is good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.